we have 10 more cool things your Mac can do right now. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So just a few days ago, I did a video and I'll put it right here. It was called 10 cool things you can do with your Mac right now. It got a lot of views, so I figured a lot of people liked it. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow up with 10 more, 10 different ones, completely different cool things you can do with your Mac right now. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video, one through 10. All right, so number one is the easiest one on the list. It takes one second to learn. If you look at my screen over here, as you know, if you open up Safari, you always have this kind of home screen here. If you wanna mix it up and have a little bit more color to this, just take any photo. See this photo I have over here? Let me actually show you what that photo is. It's just a background gradient, but it could be anything. Just drag it right here, drop it, and look at that. Now, whenever you log in, you're gonna have some color and some pop, but it could be pictures of anything you want in there. It'll fill the background out and give you a brighter day. Number two, in my last video, the one I showed you before, I actually showed you how to change the background colors of your folder. So when you open up a folder, the background color can change. I'm gonna show you how to though, how do you make your folders, your actual folders pop and make them very, very unique with all different graphics. Let me show you right here. What you wanna do is you wanna go to the web here. There's a website called macosicons.com, macosicons.com right here. And you can go in here, up here at the top where it says search. I just searched for folder, see that right there under macOS. It's gonna give you hundreds of choices in here. Look at this. Some of them have very specific things on them. There's really cool ones in here like Apple Music and stuff like that. I'm just gonna use an example over here of this stop folder, see it right here? If you click on this, Take a look, it looks really cool in there. So a folder like this would be something where you throw things in and you don't, you know, if you don't wanna delete anything in there, it's got a big stop on it, right? So don't touch it. Well, anyways, all you go and go to this website, you can download it right here, see where it says download. I'm gonna click download, it's gonna open it up over here. So I did download it and now it's up in here in preview. All I gotta do is just quit preview and let's go to the next step. Okay, so the next step is the folder that you actually wanna change. So if you look at my screen, here's my test folder over here. You can see it's just that plain blue color right there. I wanna change this one. So I'm gonna right click on it here, click get info right here, just like that. It's gonna open up this box and I'll drag it over here so you can see it. It's got this box right here. All I do is in my downloads, the folder that I just downloaded, it's gonna download somewhere, it's right here. That's the one I just downloaded with stop. I'm just gonna take that file and drag it right over this little thing right up here in the upper left-hand corner like that. And look at that, it changed the folder instantly. I'm gonna shut that, shut that down. And look over here, my folder now, it's got a big stop sign on it, see it there? So if I open it in, I throw things in this folder, now I can know never delete those. But you can have it be anything. You can even edit those if you want. But go to that website, there's literally thousands of choices for like Adobe Photoshop and just really cool things and funny things like a duck and stuff, who knows? You get the idea. But overall, it's a pretty cool thing. All right, number three is really cool if you have a whole bunch of images. Imagine more than I'm gonna show you, like maybe 10 or 15 images, and you wanna email maybe your family members, but you want the file to be pretty small, but you also want it in one file. Let me show you how to do this. If you look at my screen over here, here's three different images. These are all individual images. I'm gonna go ahead and click on them just to show you, just plain images, there's random. And uh, you can see the sizes, 3.7 megabytes. I mean, you can imagine if there was 20 of these things, it would be hard to email them, right, with that, that big of a size. So what you wanna do is just select all of them. So you basically hold the shift key down, select all of them, right click on it, then go down to quick actions right here, and then go to convert image. So what we're gonna do right off the bat is we're gonna leave them all as JPEGs. You can change the format if you want. But then we're gonna to go to, instead of actual size, we're gonna make them, let's just go down to smaller medium. Let's just choose medium this time instead of the actual size. I'm gonna click medium and then cl click convert. Watch what happens. It's gonna go ahead and think about it. It created three different images actually right here. So you can see the ones underneath it. So this one, this actual, well this one actually went from 3.7 to 72 kilobytes. This one went to 42 kilobytes and this one went to 32 kilobytes, all from you know high megabyte sizes. So it really shrank the images down. But if you wanna send this now all in one big file, let's say there was 20 or 30 of these, you can also do this. All right, so now we got the three files over here. And these are all the really small size ones, but they're still gonna look good, I'll show you. We gotta just go ahead and select them all again just like that, then right click again. And this time we're gonna choose actions. And this time we're gonna say create PDF right there. See that right there? I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna go ahead and create a PDF for me and I'm gonna click off that. It created it right here. Now watch what happens. If I double click this PDF, it's gonna open up this whole thing and it's gonna have all of your images in one file here. Take a look at this. So somebody can look at that and actually you know, see all the images that you sent them. And look at the size of this file now. If we go back in here, it's 150 kilobytes. Remember before combined, it was like four or five um, megabytes. So this is, you know, I don't know what that comes out to, but it's way, way smaller, one tenth or less the size. Now we made it medium, but you can make it you know, large. It's gonna still shrink it quite a bit and still look better. So depending on the quality you want, obviously 
you can go ahead and make any size you want. But this is a great way to say, you know, if you want to send your family a whole bunch of pictures at once in, a, in one file, like I said, in a PDF, this does it right away. Here we go with number four. This one's really interesting because you do not need an Apple Music account to get this to work. It's free, basically. If you go into Apple Music over here, you can see in here, and you type for over here in the search bar, I'm gonna type for any local radio station like WGN, I'm in Chicago, and click Enter. It's gonna come up with some choices, but you can actually see WGN Radio right here. If you click Play, watch what happens. It's gonna play it. You may not be able to hear it. There it goes. Sometimes the fun begins with hear that? You might not hear that. So I'm going to pause that and uh, just started playing the radio station live. And there's no, you know, you don't need an Apple Music account or nothing. So I found that, all right? So then I was thinking, like, that's local. Can you find any radio station out there at all? And you actually can. So I went online and I was looking for, like, German radio stations. So here it is right here. And I just looked up this one right here. It said, you know, from Cologne. What is it? Uh, WDR2. Look at that. That's a radio station. So I said, let's just try that in Apple Music. Let's just see if you can find it. So we went in here and we went WDR space 2. And then I click enter, and what does it do? It finds it right here, look at this, unbelievable. So again, if you click play, it takes a second. Welcome to TuneIn. And there it goes. And I don't wanna get a strike on it, but it started playing the radio station. Pretty incredible, right? So if you like local radio, or if you don't wanna just listen to the radio from your Mac, you just go into Apple Music, search for the actual, kind of like the tagline, um, WBBM or whatever, whatever the radio station is, it should come up. It's not always 100%, but most of them do, and you can just start playing it for free, and that's about it. All right, number five is actually a really quick one. It helps in a lot of cases. Let me just show you what I mean here. If you take screenshots, all right, let's say you take a screenshot. If you look at my screen over here, I think a lot of people know, if you actually hold down Shift-Command and click four, so Shift-Command four, you're gonna get like this little, see, and this is, not, this is not the tip, hold on one second. You see this little icon here that comes up, it's like a little crosshairs. You can then go ahead and select an area on here, choose it and then let go and it's gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Obviously it puts it down here and it'll save somewhere, right? Then if you wanna use that screenshot, you gotta go into your, wherever it saved it to, you can drag it into a document and then you can paste it into the document. But this actual shortcut is really cool because what you do instead of that, instead of that combination there, what you wanna do this time is you wanna hold down Control Command, Control Command Shift and four. So you gotta do all of those keys at once. And then let me actually do that right now, Shift Command Control four. I'm still gonna get the crosshairs, but this time it's different. So if I go ahead and select something, you're gonna notice right away that it didn't put it over here. It's not saving it anywhere. All it does if you hold those combinations down is it copies it to the clipboard instead. Instead of copying it or instead of downloading it and saving it somewhere on your system, it puts it into the clipboard. So now what you can do is if you go into any document that's actually up, you can actually go ahead and just paste it right in. Let me just show you that. Let me create a new note here inside of here and I just go Control V and look at that. Here's the image. It didn't save it anywhere until you actually copy copy it back, so you gotta copy it because it's still in the clipboard, but then it doesn't save it to some rogue spot. So this is a great tip if you're actually just copying things to move to a document right away, and you just don't wanna save it anywhere else in your, you know, in your files to take up space, you just copy it right in this way, and it works flawlessly. For this next tip, it's actually really nice if you're watching a YouTube video and you wanna get other work done around you, and you wanna have kind of a floating window, but then you wanna place it exactly where you want. That's kind of the key here. So if you look at my screen over here, I'm gonna go ahead and start playing this video. This is one of my old videos. So we watch this, here I am here. If you right click on this, you're gonna get this menu, right? But if you double right click, you're gonna get a different menu, just like that. You're gonna get this menu, double right click. You're gonna go ahead and enter picture and picture right there. You're gonna see that it puts this little window here. See how it floats over everything I'm doing? Now if I wanna go ahead and work on something here, this is gonna float and I can resize this. See this, I can make it big, small. I can have that. Now the problem with this though, is this only goes to each corner. Look at this, if I let go here, it's gonna to go to that corner. If I let go here, it's gonna to go to that corner. But you can actually move this wherever you want. Just hold the command key down and now I can move it anywhere with the command key held down, see that? But if I don't hold the command key down, it's gonna go back to these corners. So, but if I want it right there for some reason, hold the command key down, it'll stay right there. Again, you can resize it, but it's gonna stay over anything that you're doing so that you can actually watch this YouTube video as you're working or whatever you're gonna be doing. Let's say you're like doing some research or something. It's just kind of a cool, it's called floating, you know, whatever, floating window or whatever, but you just wanna make sure the command key's the, the difference here so you can move it anywhere on the screen you want, not just the corners. 
Okay, this next one's actually pretty cool and a lot of people don't know it exists. If you look at my screen, I'm in pages right now and I'm typing a word. A lot of times you get stuck typing a word. I'm just gonna pretend like I don't know how to spell emoji. Let's just say I didn't, and but this is the only part I know. And it doesn't. it's not giving me any hints here either. The hints aren't coming up. All I have to do is just stop to the point where I know it and I can hold down the FN, FN key and then click the F5 button. Watch what happens on my screen. It'll go ahead and list any of the words in here that actually start like that like emojis, emoji, obviously, emotion. And then you can go ahead and just kind of finalize it, click on it, and it's done. So something like para, again, it's not giving me any any uh, you know, any way to kind of complete this. It's not giving me any hints. So just hold on the F5, or I'm sorry, the FN key, and then click the F5 key, and you're gonna get all the different options here. And what I really wanted was like maybe paramedics, or you know, you get it whatever you want to hear, paradox, and you can go ahead and complete the word. It, it, it's hard to explain here, but there's a lot of times where you get stuck where it's not giving you any help, and this is a good way to get help, or at least figure out some other words that you want in there. This next one's actually a really good tip if you have a MacBook. So let's assume you went to the library and you forgot your MacBook there, and there's people that found it, but that, that person's an honest person. Let's just assume they are. There's still some left out there, right? But they have no way of knowing who left it there. They, there's no address on the outside of the MacBook. When they open the screen up, they can't log in to see whose it is. So you're never gonna see it. You're never gonna get it back. But there's a way to solve that. Let me show you how. So if you go over here, we're in control panel. You go to lock screen over here on the left-hand side right here. And then inside of here, there's something called show, show message when locked right there. And you go ahead and just select that, turn it on, and then click set right there. And inside of here, you say something like, if found, please, you know, call. And you put your number in here, just like this, even though I'm typing it in wrong. But you put a phone number in there. It looks crazy there. I missed the dashes. But you get the idea. So you put that in there, and then it'll look like this on the screen when they actually get to the lock screen. See it here? And then you also maybe offer a reward. See how I did that? So the person actually that finds it, they, have, they can't get into it, so they can't use it. And they know they're gonna get a reward for something, maybe give them 50 bucks or something. And uh, and then you, hopefully you'll get your MacBook back. I think it's just a good tip if, if you, you know, just to have it in there just in case, even though hopefully you won't lose it, you just never know. All right, this next one's a super easy tip, and it's just something that I use every once in a long while, but still it's good to know. If you look at my screen, obviously let's say I'm working on this window here, and I wanna do something to this, I wanna resize the back window, but it's obviously if you click on this, it's gonna go here, I gotta resize it back here, and then I gotta click back on this, my main window to keep working over here. Instead of doing that, anytime you have a bunch of windows open, if you just hold down the command key, the command key, hold it down, you can go ahead and actually click on the back window here and I can go ahead and resize it back here. Look at this, I can move this one around, I can do whatever, it's not gonna actually move this away from the front though. So I can go ahead and do things in the background by holding the command key down. Obviously if I don't hold it down and I click on this, this window comes to the forefront. It's good in some reasons, I just wanted to show people that's available and uh, post in the comments how you would use it. All right, the 10th and final one, something that's built into Spotlight that I use quite a bit. And there's other ways to do this, like all these things, but still, it's kind of useful to me. So you, I have Spotlight open. Obviously, you click on the little magnifying glass. We have Spotlight open. You can type in anything you want. Let's just type in a word here. I want to get a definition of a word, and I want to know a little bit more about it. I'm just going to type in Fathom, just like that. That's going to give you some information in Spotlight. But while this word's here, hit Command D. So Command D. It's gonna go ahead and open up another screen here. It's gonna give you the dictionary definition. So to understand the difficult problems to fathom or measure of depth in water. You can see the differences here. Now, if it was another word like happy, you could do Sothoris here. You could actually see different versions of it. It would say, you know, what are other words for happy? The other cool thing is it's got a link directly right here to Wipekedia. So you click on this and it's gonna, you know, you can go ahead and get all the information right from their website as well. And even if you change this, let's just do happy. You can go ahead and change that. It's gonna bring you to, obviously, this is, <laughs> look, it brings up this guy. But um, obviously, if you go to the dictionary, it's going to give you di di dictionary definition as well. And this is where it's going to give you alternatives like here, you know, cheerful, cheery, merry. So just I like using it like if it's a really, you know, let's say you're looking up something um, like string theory or something that's crazy or some physics thing. That'll work really well because you got Wipekedia, you got the definition, you got alternatives all built into one command D in Spotlight. All right, that's the 10. I'm gonna wrap this up for this week. Now, I'm not gonna be doing these training videos every single week. I do a whole bunch of other ones. Definitely subscribe to the channel. I got, you know, five, you know 5K monitors coming out with reviews. I like doing these to help people. Plus, the other one was just, you know, did so well. I figured I'd kind of do another one. And I have a whole bunch of more of these, right? I just don't wanna, I've done some in the past. I don't wanna repeat those. So I'll maybe repeat those again for all the new people eventually. Subscribe if you can, if you like this stuff. And we will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.